So today we're looking at the cosine rule. We've got some questions already uh, ready for us. Question number one A. So I'm just going to quickly show you the sheet as well. Okay, I suppose no, I don't know that. Quickly, folks, you can copy that stuff down, please. Just make that nice and big. This is the original exercise that we're going to be looking at. Exercise 22E. We got question one up here, and then we got question two at the bottom to do with angles for those of us who want to practice some questions at home. Put that back over there. There we go. Okay, are we ready? So there's that formula. The formula for cosine again, this uh, rule is for non right angle triangles. Uh, a squared is talking about a length equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So we need to label the diagram. So let's label our diagram. Do I have a diagram of two equal quarters? Go back to record. Now, Bismillah, right? We're gonna, we're gonna now label the diagram. Okay, we got the angle here. That angle that we're looking for in the question, we're going to call that the big A, which corresponds to A over here. So obviously the opposite, its corresponding length will then be called little a. Okay, now the other uh, corners, we can label them in any order, big B and big C. So it doesn't matter the order of that. Now, the side which is opposite the big C, has some, this will then automatically become little C, which is the length of uh, corresponding length for the angle C, and opposite angle B will become what? It's the corresponding length, which is little b. So now we've labeled up the diagram as one of the most important parts of the question formula. Label the diagram so it corresponds to our formula. Now we see what we need to work out. So the only thing that we need to work out is the x here yeah, or the a value here. So. Let's have a look. So if we look back at our original diagram, what do we not know? We, we don't know the... Okay. Uh, no one is, uh, okay, so we don't know the little a. Do we know the b value? Yes. Do we know the c value? Yes, the little c value. Do we know... So we know that, we know that. Do we know the big a value? No. Yes, there is. So in this particular formula, everything on the right hand side, we know the value of it. We know it. So what do we need to work out then? The uh, A. So don't, that's A squared. We want to work out A. Okay. So we'll have to do some adjustment there. So now we need to move the square over. The square comes over. What does it become? So then we can copy down the formula again underneath. So B squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a is now equal to a. Now our a corresponds in the question to what letter? x. So you can put x in there if you like, instead of a. Okay, so now our a is turned into x because that's what we're trying to work out in the question. You can put it in now, you can put it at the end, it's up to you. Now what we need to do for all the other corresponding values, we need to start putting them values in. So let's have a look. What is the little b value? The little b value is equal to? So, can see there? So, little b value is 7. So, where we see b, put a 7 in there. What is the little c value? The little c value is? 4. four. So, where we see a c, put a 4. Okay, so cos of the big A value, what is the big A value from the diagram? 62. So now we have absolutely substituted everything we know and everything is fitting beautifully. We just got one little bit to put back on. We've got to put the little hat back on. The square root. Sorry about my square root being slightly kind of curvy and stuff. It wasn't, it's not intended to be that, it's just a, it's just a handwriting style as well. Now what we need to do, we need to put this in exactly as it is into our calculator. So we put the square root up. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to put it up a bit. Oh. Okay, so square root sign. So shift, square root. So we have 7 squared, add 4 squared, 
minus 2 times by 7 times by 4 times by cos 62. So what you see there is exactly, I mean, uh, the cal most calculators kind of give you a few brackets for the cos, little one. Just, just make sure you complete it and this one. So I don't have the bracket here, because that's not how I've written it. But the calculator gives you a free bracket. So put in, and press equal. And that gives us so far, uh, 6.2217033343. Okay, now, we need to give this question, we're working out, a it's a length, isn't it, yeah? Length. We need to give it to a, I would say, you know, not really more than one decimal place. So here's my first decimal place. So you put a little dotted line down here to bring that in the stop here, because this is called my last digit. The next digit is called the decider digit. If the decider is five or is less than five, we leave the last digit alone. So the answer becomes x is equal to six point two centimeters, because it's the length to one decimal place. Okay, so this question is a matter. The key is let's move it out of the way. Calculator. The key to this question is labeling the diagram properly as we did in the previous question. The correct labeling of the diagram, the length and size corresponding to what we have, throwing all the values in. Once you throw all the values in, is to put in the calculator. So, so far, this actually worked out today quite straightforward. We have a formula, the diagram matches the formula, we just substitute everything in one go, put it in the calculator, and it's done. Bam. Go on. How do you know um, if we should use? Ah, good question. I'm glad you asked that question. I was waiting for somebody to ask that question. Now, I use this particular rule. If you if you want to check that it's cosine rule, uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best to do it. I'll just give me a moment while I show you the technique that I teach students. Uh, I need to draw my finger. Uh, okay. Right, so think of this like this, okay, yeah, so that's my first finger, okay, there, and that's my thumb, it's a bit big, but never mind. If you can get a question, so I'll just, I'm going to highlight that for extra emphasis, okay, if you know this, this finger side, you know this length here, which is thumb, you know the angle in between, okay, and then you know this length here which is this th this finger here. So if you know everything on your, that, uh, you know this length, you know this length, you know this angle here, then you use the cosine, cosine rule to work out the opposite side. So if you know this length here, or this, this finger, and this length here, which is the thumb, and the angle in between it here, if you know all this, this, and this, and you want to work out the opposite side, then we use cosine rule. What if it's on the other side? What's on the side? It doesn't matter, so you can just, just, you just turn around, just turn, you turn the L around. The L can be in any orientation, yeah, as long as you can fit an L on it. Yeah, if, if you know this, and you know this, and that, you want to work out that, then it's cosine rule. So if you know side, angle, side? Yeah, so it's, yeah, you know the side, the angle in between, and the other side, and you want to work out the opposite side, then it's cosine rule. That's one way of thinking about it as well, yeah? So you know the angle in the middle, and you know it's adjacent side, both sides. Okay, that's when we use cosine rule. And sine rules when you have the two dumbbells. You have two sets of information, an angle and a side, and on any other angle, and you want to work out its side. So we use that. So we look at that. Okay, right, I'm going to give you some questions to try on just this first part, which is working out the lens. Okay, I'm going to I need to move that. Uh, actually, I'm going to just leave that there. Okay. okay, folks, Bismillah, welcome back. We are now moving on to using the cosine rule to work out angles. Okay. This particular question, question 2A from exercise 22E, what we got here, I've, I've, I think I've slightly, I've already put the highlight on there, we know this length here, we know this length, and we want to work at the angle in between, and we know actually the other side length as well. Okay, hang on one second, I've done slightly different wrong color coding there. Just give me one moment. Okay. Okay, no, 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 we use that one there. Okay, now, if we look at this particular question, just give me one up. In this particular question, what do we know? So, in this particular question, we know this length, we know this length, 
we know all of the lengths. What do we want to work out? We want to work out the. How do you want to work out? What's that called? Uh, the angle. You want to work out this angle over here. Now, the angle that you want to work out in cosine, you know it's a cosine rule question to do with angles if you got all of the lengths. If you know all the length and you've got to work out a missing angle, it has to be cosine rule. So we know that now. So now let's label the diagram. So what should we call this angle missing one? We should call it? Yeah. Big A. Okay. Which makes the opposite side little? Small A. Small A. It's corresponding length. Now, B and C. Let's have uh, Mr. Hamza. We know for B and C, or does it, does it matter or can I, or does it have to go in a particular place? What about B and C? Where do we put them? In any order. So if I call the top one, big B, that's my angle B, that makes this six, it makes it into corresponding little b. So now, Hassan, where's the C going to be? Uh, three. So do you use cost for that? Okay, something, I don't know what's in the box. Uh, just went a bit crazy there. Okay, Bismillah, I'm going to go back. So this is going to be big C, which makes the 3 into what? what? Small, C. Small C. I'm just going to rub off the ticks for the moment, see if I can rub them off. So just get them out of the way. Oops. A bit too much out of the way. I'm going to put the B back in now, inshallah. Because we need the B back in properly. There we go. So now we have correctly labeled the diagram. So Hassan, the angles that we're looking for, what do we always call it? Big A. Right? Because in our in our formula, if we show you the formula now. Okay, right, what is the formula? So the formula is equal to, what did we say the formula was equal to first? We said the formula is... Okay, the formula was a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. Now let's tick and cross what we know and what we don't know. Do we know the little a? Little b? Little c? Little b, little c? Okay, what do we not know? A. Big a. Big a. Okay, so we know every single thing there apart from the big A, which is the angle that we're trying to work out. It could be labeled on your diagram as a big capital P or something, or a C or a D or, or anything else. So we just relabel the diagram to suit our formula. Okay, as long as you got A here in between these two here, uh, A corresponds to that length that we know, then we can label B and C in any order. Now, here comes the, uh, the exciting task. How do we work out A from here now? We have to now rearrange the whole equation and make A the subject. So what do we start with first? Hassan, you can start it off. What do we move first? Uh, do you move the B? Squared. And then we move the? C squared. And then we move the? 2 minus 2 BC. No, it's not minus 2 BC. It's multiplied by minus 2 BC. So what actually do we have to do? Opposite of adding B squared is? Minus B squared. Opposite of adding C squared is? And opposite now, listen carefully to this part, this part is my mistakes. Opposite of multiplying by minus 2bc is dividing by minus 2bc. We don't reverse the minus, we reverse the multiply, we must divide. Okay, that's where the students make mistakes in the rearrangement. So let's do this, okay, over here now, so we have here now, so it becomes a squared, opposite of add b squared is minus b squared. Opposite of add c squared, when it comes over, it becomes minus c squared. And the opposite of multiplying by minus 2bc is dividing by minus 2bc. We do not reverse the minus. We reverse the multiply, that becomes divide. Okay, and then also, sorry, we also got to move the thing. The opposite of cos, because we've got to work at a and not cos a. So it becomes cos to the minus 1, which actually, uh, I'm in the so wrong. Is it going to be square root? Do you have to put the square root? No, no. It, it, it inverse cos, not square root. Because yeah. we want to work at a. So we're going to put this bracket around here, bracket around here. Okay, now, uh, how, do we, how do we write it in? 
Okay, folks, I'm going to write it in here, uh, and I'll seek apologies for not even running out of space. But this cos minus 1 actually doesn't go here. Where does it go? It actually needs to go over here, at the front of the bracket. Okay, I've just run out of space. What we can do here, I can cheat a bit and uh, expand my window. Okay, can I move this across a little No, that, that doesn't really help. Okay, let's move that back. So the cos minus one actually sits at the front, okay? That's all. Cos minus one, then the bracket. That's what I'm trying to say. I've run out of space, folks, I'm sorry about that. This cos minus one here goes over here at the front. Okay, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to cheat now. I just, I just wrote out a way to cheat. So cos minus one, that one there, I'm going to rub it off from here. And I'm gonna go to take it off from here because it's over there now. So this is my cos minus one. So cos minus one of all of this gives me a. So now let's. I'm gonna rewrite the game uh, properly now. Sorry about that, folks. Put the cos minus one in here now, nicely. Let's put everything back in. What is the A value? The A value according to the diagram is equal to? Four. Give me the values please folks. 4. So we've got 4 squared minus B squared. B squared. What's B value? Squared. Minus 6 squared minus, minus three, squared. 3 squared, which is there. Okay, so give me one moment. That just doesn't look very good. Okay, that's better. Okay, right, there we go. Okay, well, and on the bottom we've got minus 2 times by the B value, the B value is 6, times by the C value which is? 3. And it's all cos minus 1, sorry about this, it's being hanging off the end, here it is properly, and that will give you the value of A. So we need to get our calculator, our trusted calculator, bring that into the scene, and we need to do exactly what we say there, shift, cos minus 1, brackets, uh, fraction button, so we've got 4 squared, take away 6 squared, take away 3 squared, yeah, and then press replay, bring it down to the bottom. So there we go. I'm going to use for the minus here, folks, I'm going to use this little baby minus here, and this little minus here rather than the big takeaway. Uh, 2 times by 6 times by 3. Whoa, that, that doesn't work really. Time by three. Is it two dp? Yeah, I think it's. I think all the answers. Are all answers? This is also two dp in the answers. Yeah. Okay, we'll do two dp as well. Okay. So, what's the difference between uh, the small minus and the big minus? Uh, sometimes the big minus can cause the calculator to crash. Okay, the little minus is the one we're supposed to be using here. The one the bracket, the little baby one. So, what, what do we have here? Let's write those values down, and then we need to round it off. Okay, so we have now as the answer to that. We have now 36.3360575 is the A value. We're going to give that one to two decimal places. Is that what the answer is? 2dB? Two, two yeah. yeah. And we're going to stop there. So that's our last digit. That's my decider digit. The 6. Because it's 5 or more, you add 1 to the last digit. So 36.33 becomes 36.3. Four and it's an angle, isn't it? Yeah, and so that is the value of a to two decimal places. Sorry, folks, I'm moving out space again. We just have to do that for the moment. So this particular question involves us rearranging the formula first, but we get this. We get this every time the same one, the pink one. Cos minus one a squared minus b squared minus c squared divided by minus two bc. Put the values in, throw it in there, and it's all done. Let's move the calculator out of the way for those seconds so you can see the question properly. Okay, I'll be happy with that example. Okay. Yeah. Samara, is that good? Are you, are, you good to go? are you good to try some questions now yourself? Yeah? Okay, right, let me tell you which questions I want you to try. So, uh, can I borrow your homework there for a second? Okay, on that same page, I've done question 2, part A. I want you to do for me, please, question 2B and 2C. Question 2B and 2C. I'll just quickly show you what that looks like here. 
Two B is this one, and two C is that one for those who follow me on YouTube. Okay, you know, I'm gonna pause and I'll come on the class. Anybody need some help? I'll, I'll, I'll inshallah help you with the question now.